Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, class. Greetings, class. Greetings, class. Thank you for bearing with me. I'm waiting on Eddie to come along now. We just about got our technical difficulties. It's got to be technical difficulties happen. What is this? Murphy's Law. He likes to hang around my hang around my stuff. Hi, brother Chris. We are live right now, Eddie. We're live right now. Mr. Transaction, we're live. That's me, guys. That's me, Mr. Transaction. <laughs> we are live. Let's go, Eddie. On. Thank you for your How time. You doing, man, I'm blessed. Good seeing you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good seeing you, my brother. How you week, man, going? Everything's good. A little stressful, you know. Bought a house today and went out there with the keys. I didn't get a chance to go inside. Went out there and the lady, lady, lady left a lot of stuff in there. So we're going to have to deal with that today. Uh, but you know how that goes. Yeah. But what was the pre foreclosure? What kind of deal? No, this is just a bandit sign. The lady was uh, found the love of her life, lived in Tennessee, and she was ready to go move with her new sweetheart. <laughs> and the house needs 40, I would say. I, I got a whole video I'll share it with you. So today. Oh, my God. Huh? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll show the video. I got a oh, video before. You huh? put on YouTube? Yeah, I had it over there. I just walked through it with, with the camera. Man, I just went in addition, man. The guy, you know how you go up another store. Wow. What? Man, it, it was amazing, man. I got the guy's number, but he, man, it's, I'm speechless, man. That whole house looked new. Oh, he went they up a second a store? Yeah, it already had a main level with a basement, but they went up another level. Man, that house is beautiful, man. I'll be back wow. over there tomorrow. I'm going to show you. I'm going to send you the pictures today of the outside. I'm going back in there tomorrow to get some inside photos. Chris, that thing looks brand spanking new, man. I bet the way they did that add on, because at first it looked weird because the roof looked kind of really big, but... After they finished with it, it looks it looks pretty good, man. That house is amazing. Yeah, it's that house looked like it was built in the seventies. It looked like it was a brand new house, man. They gutted it. They totally gutted it. Everything, totally renovated it. All took all the sheetrock off, put the big baseboards up, man. It's amazing, man. I was a loss for words yesterday. Yeah, you know, I never did the addition like I never did the addition like you go up another level. Yeah, we do that. That's one of the three one of the three pillars of real estate that we teach expansion. You know, we, sometimes you can't go out; you got to go up. Yeah, but you got to take so everything out, though, Eddie. When you're doing those, dog, you can't have a whole new upstairs, brand new, sexy, ready to go, and downstairs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the downstairs are like 1940. Yeah, so let's get rolling, man. I got. I'm done in an hour. I'm, I'm gone. I got, man. You know what's weird? I yeah, thank you for joining sure. us. Both of us are busy as hell. I can only imagine, you know, nobody's more busy than us and we're no busier than other people. But we have to make time because we love you, class. This is Chris Haskins with the Real Estate Roundout hanging out with Mr. Transaction. <clears throat> my mission statement, my ministry is to raise. I'm going to raise and I'm going to raise the financial literacy of my fellow mankind through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. Today's training is gonna be on deal insurance. Eddie, we didn't get a chance to kind of go over our outline or our program for today, but let's go ahead and do it right now. <clears throat> deal insurance, how to prevent sellers from backing out of your signed contracts, Eddie. Yes, this is a monster. You gotta know this, and I do this on every one of my deals. <clears throat> Eddie, you wanna share with us a story on one of your deals, I don't know, to go, you can share with us some of the backdrop and paint the picture of how this thing, first of all, what happens when you deal with sellers? 
Well, in, in this competitive market right now, um, Chris, as well as some people on here may know, you got a lot of investors that were pretty much backdoor you, man. A lot of people, you know, not trustworthy. So you got investors, they want to deal bad enough. They'll try to backdoor you, come around to the seller, offer them more money to get a deal. And when I first started in 05, the same thing was happening, man. Actually, mm -hmm. matter of fact, my first deal went down like that, man. And if I would have had this certain document signed, I wouldn't have had that problem. And that was, that was going to be my first deal, first wholesale deal. And I would have walked away, Chris, with like 40 grand off that deal. Good God. You know, they, on your first deal, you hit for 40 or 50, even though I didn't know what to do with the money. I would have spent it just as fast as I did the rest of it. <laughs> but, you know, the 40 grand on your first pop, boy. They give you some kind of momentum. Right. Right. But you know, I you know, I stayed. Oh, let me well, let me tell you about the deal. So it was a nice house, duplex. I put it on the contract, and this is a guy who was in the neighborhood. He's renovated like seven or eight properties. So he feel like that's his area. So I was marketing a property for sale on the back end. And he I ran across this guy. He didn't like how much I was selling it for. So he went around to the seller and let them know what I was doing. Now, that was my first deal, so I didn't tell them I was going to flip it. I was going to wholesale it. They just thought I was going to buy it. So I didn't tell them that, so I'm nervous. You know, that's why I didn't tell them, because I was, I was like, well, they, they're they not going to let me flip their house and make it that kind of money, which really, it doesn't even matter as long as they get their money. But, you know, I'm new, so I'm like, man, a person just not going to let you just make 20, 30, 40 grand off their house. And be cool now if they knew how much i was gonna make of course well well shit, they found out because <laughs> he went and told them i was marking it up oh he told so he, he told the seller yeah he told the seller i had it back out there on the market for hire hmm. so but still i had them on the contract and if i would have had that certain agreement signed they would have had to buy by that contract but they backed out with me they didn't sell it to him they end up selling it to somebody else but man, if I would have had the right, correct paperwork signed, that 40 grand, Chris. Um, so it was a very expensive seminar, but I'm glad, you know, I didn't let that discourage me because a lot of people would have said, oh, you know, a lot of people would have took that as a loss and quit real estate. It don't work. Just because you had one hang up. You're going to mm -hmm. have several, but you just got to keep moving. But I learned a valuable lesson, man. You got to have that affidavit signed. Oh God, you yeah, got my stomach, my stomach bubbling. We're gonna both share. That's why I love talking to Eddie. <clears throat> we both we're gonna share with you two stories on how we have, we have both been affected. Then I'm gonna drop into on you how we got around that stuff. So Eddie, uh, viewers, please put your questions into the comment box over there. Shoot your questions in. We're gonna be ending today at sharp at two. Shoot your questions in anything about real estate or today we're covering deal insurance, how to prevent sellers from backing out of your signed contract. So, Eddie, you lost that deal. Yeah, I lost it. Shoot your questions in. 40 grand, man. 40 grand gone down the drain. But if I had that one document signed, Chris, they couldn't did anything because my contract had the assignment in there. So, they signed off on it, so I still could have signed it. I would have did a double closing with that kind of money anyway, 40 grand. Yeah. Because, of course, you don't want to do assignment unless it's like five grand. I say I only do assignment like five or seven grand, but if it's more than that, then I do a double close because if they see you making 40 grand, <laughs> they go have a problem with that one. But I it's not just I gotta maintain my composure because I'm thinking about all the checks that I have. When you showed that contract assignment addendum to your cash buyer and it's got 30,000 on there, it's almost Ooh. like you, you walking over there. You wanna show it to him? You don't even wanna show it to him, dog. I remember one time I showed it to God, man, this dude, I, I could feel the whole mood in the room change. They don't like that either. Some of them hope some of them end buyers. Yeah. So you got that 40. I remember I had a 30 one time. Man, dude didn't like it. But he paid it though. But yeah, I don't like I like the I I, I would prefer to do an assignment, but you're right, Eddie. Sometimes you can't do it. For me, <clears throat> you can eat your food. 
Deal insurance. Let me give you some background how deal insurance came about. And, and I have to claim it. I created this deal insurance. Not saying that there are other people that don't, that don't have them. We are experts. Back in 2004, Eddie, 2004 when I started, I was wholesaling left and right. Man, I remember having five contracts at a time. And then all of a sudden it was like my card, house of cards was like falling. It's crumbling. Sellers mm. not showing up. Buyers not closing when they say they're going to close. You know, sellers saying, you know what? I don't think I want to sell you my house after I agreed to sell it to you for 20 or 30. And I'm like, you know, and then that happened to me about seven times. Eddie. I finally got, I just got enough. I got sick and tired of it. Matter of fact, I learned some of this from, a, from an attorney in Atlanta. So mm. he, and it, it just, I went to about five attorneys. At the time, the memorandum of contract or the affidavit of understanding of what you use. I don't know if it was generally used, Eddie. How, when did you hear about it? I actually heard about it when I first started investing. So I knew from the jump. So you knew. But you know, man, you all that information you get as soon as you leave a seminar, you can't possibly retain everything. So I was right. excited. Got a call off my sign. I'm just ready to put it on the contract. But I left the most important doggone document out the whole deal. Thank you, boy. <laughs> So you didn't think about, I don't think, you know, a lot of newbie investors don't think about, well, I wonder what would happen if my seller decided not to sell me the house. You know, you just don't think about that stuff mm -hmm. until you got a ten, twenty thousand dollar $20,000 payday and your seller doesn't show up, right? Ooh, <laughs> that's a bad day. That's a tough day. So for me, it was like, I was, one time, just like you, I was, I had a contract. I was having a little, a few problems wholesaling it at the time I, I just all i knew was wholesaling everything looked like a nail because i all i knew all i had was a hammer right that's the only skill i knew and the same thing happened i had a guy showed up matter of fact he showed up at my doorstep dude talking about well first of all he went to my seller's house Whoa. went to my seller's house and he offered him five thousand more and then the seller gave him my phone number and he called me and he said, you know what? I'm going to buy this house right now from the seller. He told me he was going to cut me out. <clears throat> Whoa. Told me, Eddie. I'm like, you know what? What can I do? And when real estate, that's why I love the spirit of real estate is it speaks in documents. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? If my seller decided not to sell to me, what can I do? Who am I? What can I do? I can't make him sell me the house, right? You can't make people sell me the house. So I thought. Fast forward. I met these different attorneys. I'm like, I'm talking to attorneys around town. As a matter of fact, a guy in Atlanta, I'm like, what can I do to make sure people are going to sell me their house after they sign my contract? I'm sick of it. Had another guy tell me, you know, Chris, I just, I just don't want to sell it to you. And the third time, another time where a lady, where I put this in place, and when they backed out, they sued me, Eddie. I have been sued to release my rights on a house. So the lady told me, she, she said, you know what? I know I agreed to 40000 but I hired, she hired an attorney to make me release my rights against her property, man. So that's why I know why deal insurance is so powerful. So Chris, what you going you what document that you you develop? Because Chris created his own his own document. Which what did you create, Chris? Let them know what you create. I'm glad you asked. Mine is so called these doggone sellers in line. <laughs> My hey. last one, where I had, you know, it's weird. You don't really have to use them unless the seller starts to. You can just that hold them. Shaking. Yeah, you go hold them in the hold them in the file. I use something called the memorandum of contract, or some cities you got to call it the affidavit of understanding. And all it is is black ink on white paper. Ed. As you can see here, it has to be notarized, notary for the seller, notary for the buyer. It's mm. a notarized. And if you have a problem class with, if you feel squeamish about getting something notarized, you know, there, there's a mobile notary that will meet at your seller's house and get this notarized for you. So the memorandum of contract is what it looks like at the top. This is black. All it says is, Mr. Seller, I agree to sell. Mr. Buyer, I agree to buy. And you get it notarized. And what you have to do is take this document down to the courthouse and simply file it at your courthouse. And it costs $21, brother, brother Eddie. $21. So you put that on file or on notice, if you will, at the courthouse. And when someone does a title search, 
when they do a site when they go say for instance if they change their mind to, and they want to sell to somebody else whoever done it whatever attorney is going to do the title search for that seller they're going to go down there do the title search and they're going to say bing well mr seller you already agreed to sell this house to chris haskins and we got a contract attached to that so they know exactly what's going on we bought out the price but when they do that title search brother eddie it pops up and i had one recently where a lady i made seven thousand dollars for a release of lien this lady Woo! Think, oh man yeah i think she, she was on drugs her. huh that's what you charged her she called me up well you know what's weird the deal got out on the street she signed my paperwork right what happened was i went to her house at that time i felt like she was it was a drug abuse situation because the house was paid off and she was still it was very dilapidated hey billy <clears throat> very dilapidated she was living in there very rundown house teeth falling out you know the whole typical story she signed my documents i met her there with the with the mobile notary i paid my ten dollars for my deal insurance we got it signed at that time i immediately went down recorded it don't you know we went to closing the day of closing she said you know what i'm not gonna sell you my house i'm gonna sell it to somebody else and a year later i waited i told her I'm like, Miss Smith, don't you know this ain't my first rodeo, dog? You know I've been yeah. down this road before. Hey, she messed with a bit. She messed up. <laughs> I'm like, I've been down this road before. So a year later, Eddie, another wholesaler called me because they did the title search. We know what? I take it back. A few weeks later, the wholesaler called me, wanted me to release my lien. I'm like, you know what? Tell the seller to call me. So months went on, months went on. A year later, because she had put it out on the street for sale again. A year later, finally called her, title company called me. They said, Chris, how much are you going to charge to release your lien at the courthouse? I mean, I'm like, I need 7000 So she had to pay me all the fees, back taxes, and all that stuff. And now, when all she had to do was sell me the house, Eddie. So she lost big time on that one. Good. She learned a freaking lesson, man. You learned I don't, have, I don't have no remorse for him, man, because you shouldn't, if you're not ready to sell, you shouldn't go on the contract. Yeah, you, you know you, especially you over twenty one shit. You grown. You know what you're doing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And if you're not, if you don't know what you're doing, guess what? Hire somebody. Go out there, pay the money, hire an attorney. Hey, after losing, not making that forty grand. Hey, I don't have no sympathy for. <laughs> Me, <neither. laughs> I know you don't. I know you could have used that one, brother. Big time. But, but I think this happens a lot, though, Eddie, out there in the business. People have contracts signed and they think that the seller is just going to do. Let me ask you, how many times out of 10 does your seller not do what they say? Or say, for instance, they they tell you the condition of the property before you get there. They say, well, it doesn't need a lot of work. How many times does a seller say something to you that's not really the truth? Oh, shit. About 80 percent of the time. Eight out of 10. About eighty percent of the time. So you don't really know what they're gonna do, you know. And I can't. Back in the day, when I was at night, I'm like asleep at night, like, hmm, is my seller gonna show up tomorrow? I mean, damn, do you really know, Eddie? <clears throat> no, you don't, man. That's why. But you know what? With that man, that's the best thing smoking, man. That affidavit, because you you get you got them by the balls, man. They can't back out. So I advise you guys right now, this in this time where the market is jumping, you better make sure you have an affidavit signed with every contract. Because I'm telling you, if they back out the deal, then by the time if you try to hire a lawyer, get them in court, shit, they'll be closed. They got the money and gone. I Man, that, that deal be gone. They record. You got them by the balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So they have to come by you. Once you record these documents, they have to come by you guys. So remember that. And I want to tell you, Eddie, I coach people around the country, right? And every time I ask right. them, did you get the memo? They ask me, well, my seller's not calling me back. You know, if for some, sometimes the seller, you can tell when something's going on, right? You're getting ready to go to closing, you're going to closing, you're moving, you're in the boat, seller's talking. Then all of a sudden, they stop calling back or, my seller is not communicating with me properly. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, you know what? Don't worry about it. You got your you got your memorandum signed, right? No, nah, I didn't do it. And I'm gonna tell you, Eddie, 100 percent without exception. Whenever I don't get my memorandum signed, a problem pops up. Hey. I think you've been blessed though. 
Yeah, I've been blessed, but you know, I totally, man, right now because it 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 had to be God, God sent because I had a couple of wholesalers call me and told me this stuff just happened to them. Really? I mean, you talk like the next day, and you we start some kind of way we got on this subject. I bet we're gonna be getting them back signed this week because we've been slipping a little bit. We haven't been getting them signed lately. Gotcha. But anything possible, man, especially if you don't put a lot of time into a deal, man, and nothing like having your heart broken when the seller back out and you don't have no way to get any recourse. Yeah, no recourse. Well, I'm imagine just gonna encourage huh? Imagine you paid for a um pay for your title search, a home inspection, and an appraisal, and they back out on you. Oh my lord, that could be over a thousand dollars. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, get, get that signed and get it signed with every deal. Don't just make it, I make it a part of my contract, Eddie. I'm like, look, you sign the contract or purchase agreement. I just say, here, here's another document that it's another document that they always just say, listen, they, they require me to get this thing signed, you know, and it's never a question. I've never had a seller say, well, what's this right here? Why do we got to sign this? Right. And uh, the purpose of this was, was Eddie and I talk all the time, you know, we're real estate full time guys. So we like to bring you in on, on our conversations because I know from, I know the majority of America or my, for my viewers don't have a full time real estate investor that they can call at any time of the day. So it's cool to have <clears throat> questions answered and be able to kind of bounce things off of us one day a week, Eddie. Right. All right. If you want, oh yeah. If you if, if if anybody wants a copy of these documents, I'll put a link here. I know I'm slacking on that, but I'll put a link where you can download the documents on this webinar here. Anything else else you want to cover, Eddie? Before we get to questions, it's one thirty now. Mm. <clears throat> no, I think that's it, Chris. They just need to make sure it's a part of their their um their closing package. Yeah, or they're buying package when they're buying from the seller. It's yes, only yes. one page document that goes along with the sale and purchase agreement. But that yep. one page is very important. Very. All right, so we got, let's see, yeah, Celeste. Hello, hey guys, Guillermo. What's up, Guillermo? Rosanna, what's going on? Oh, I got another good one, Chris. Go I totally forgot about this one. This one was probably like. After I was about mm, three or four years in, I totally forgot about this. But I was about three or four years in. We had actually did some work on a property to get it ready so we could buy it. And the doggone seller, we put about five grand into the property, which, listening to my mentor, he taught us don't put money into properties we don't own. but. As men, sometimes we want to reinvent the wheel. So I took it upon myself, put five grand into the property, trying to make it look good so it could qualify for the loan that I was getting. Typical. Man, how about a seller? After we put the property in good shape, Chris, guess what? I don't want to sell anymore. Screw it. Stuck with the bag again. So this is the real life experience. Yeah. So you were doing the work to so it would qualify for an FHA or some type of a loan that needed some repairs. Yeah, FHA loan. Yep. I've seen a lot of guys do that. Man, that's you a learn. You learn. A lot of guys do that. Eddie. A lot of guys put the money into the house to make it so it will qualify for that loan, and then the seller gets their money, and then you're in the house. Right. So, so what would you have done different? This what time the seller seen how nice we 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 did the property and they got a change of heart and she still lives there. But nothing mm -hmm. I did I put a lien on the property, but lien is only good for a couple amount of years and it's gone. Wow! I had an affidavit on file. I probably would have had a stronger case. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Big time! Because once you have the affidavit, it's a it's a proof that you have a contract in place for them to sell it. Yeah, it's, it's really like a lien because they can't go get around it. Mm -mm. It is a lien, but yeah, it's proof that they agreed to sell. So you can, if you had to hire an attorney, the attorney would come in and force them to sell it. But you don't want to do that, man. You want to make their life a little hard. I can't believe she's still living there, Eddie. She said thank you. Did she, did she say thank you? Hey, no. 
She stopped answering my phone, like you said. <laughs> and it happens. All right, so get your memorandum signed, guys. Okay, if you want a copy of it, email me. I'll send you a link. Yes, it's gonna. It'll be a few dollars. We and Eddie do this stuff for free. I give you three hundred and fifty videos for free. I have to ask you to contribute to your education. All right. Rush, Rasha Al Mukhtar. Mukhtar, wow, that's cool. I would love a copy of this. Okay, yeah, I can, I can give it to you. Can you share the document? Yes, I'll put a link in here. Sorry about that for that. Celeste Hill, is it better to give questions in the comment box, in the chat box, guys? Is it is it best to give the seller something in subject to deals, or can it be done with zero cash, Eddie? You can do subject to zero cash. But I like to get a seller something, even if it's a hundred bucks. She wants to know what's the Is it best to give them something? Yeah, at least it's a couple of dollars, something. Yeah, I would say hundred bucks, two hundred bucks. A lot of them, when they behind, we get them with no money. But we still give them at least earnest money, a hundred or two hundred bucks. They're in the house, you know, give them moving money. They're not go. in the house. I mean, typically, they don't really care really don't even want any money but you still make a contract legal and binding you got to give them some money every state is different i know in georgia as long as we give them ten dollars then you know we're it's, it's a legal contract yeah so let you hear that so eddie's saying and i'm going to agree with that i give them five hundred dollars eddie i don't want nobody saying you gave me so I don't like something for nothing. I don't want no attorney or no judge saying I got something for nothing. So yeah, like you took advantage of. Them. They yeah. quick to say, "Oh, you took advantage of the sell." Yeah, right. It's crazy, Eddie. You know, and, and then so people huh? catch and need you too after you know after they need your help. Once they help, then oh, this guy just took full advantage of me. Cut this, cut the crap. You know, <laughs> man. Guys, get your affidavit signed, man, please. Every deal, especially now when the market is jumping. Like when the market was bad, you didn't have to worry about it. These people were praying for a buyer. But now everybody and their mama trying to buy. So you want to get the affidavit signed because they will backdoor you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's up to you. Yeah, give them some money. Celeste, give them some money. You know, if you're getting a house. I like to, when you in real estate, you got look at the, Billy, look at the value you're getting in real estate. You're getting a house, no qualify, no qualifying for the loan, right? You can afford to give somebody 500 bucks. I will give them some money. Rice bond, how do you release the affidavit of understanding? That's simple, we have. We can give you a release. All it is, it says, I, Chris Haskins, agreed to release my affidavit of understanding against Joe Seller. Very simple, very simple. And they will record that behind the, mem the memorandum. So you'll see a lien, you'll see your lien release. All right, you got that rice bond. Spiritual girl, you still trying to get those forms. What forms do I need? Oh, Lord. You need the subject <laughs> two forms. Good God. Let me email it right now. I right, assume it right now. Alan, hey. Alan, I'm in Texas, so my contract should say affidavit or memorandum. Good question. Good question. That's going to be from E. Allen. E. Allen, I have I use both. I use the memorandum of contract. They're both the same. That's what's so weird. Yeah. Sometimes it's you have to names. go ahead, Eddie. So just different names, different title, titles, different names. They are all the same though. They're both the same. They're identical. What's weird is that, like in my in my area, Eddie, where we live, I've got what we call the seven cities: Newport News, Hampton, Chesapeake, Norfolk, Virginia Beach, <clears throat> Williamsburg, Suffolk. And some cities will not take the memorandum of of contract, so wow. I have to take down there an affidavit of understanding. Mm -hmm. All I do is go home and change the top of it. Yeah, and I'm like, I don't understand why they won't. Yeah, it, it te if you go down to your clerk, just ask the clerk what they'll take, E. Allen. Ask which one they want to do. You're in Texas. I know it's big down there. You got people, man, you got people down there. I'm sure they change their mind all the time down there, brother. 
Rosanna, Chris, you we have any mentors in Cali. We can, now I'm gonna connect you. I'm gonna send you some stuff that we can do for you, Rosanna. Eddie, I'm from Atlanta. This is from Rick 22. I'm from Atlanta. What local groups would you recommend on joining to learn real estate? Oh, this is Tariq Walker. <clears throat> That's for you, Alan. I mean, just Eddie. go to your, any local real. I mean, you, have, <laughs> you got Atlanta real, Georgia real, um, real of the South, any of those reels and just go start, you know, you start learning different things. You want to get involved, period. So you can start learning the language and learning, you know, more about houses and different type of things. Mm -hmm. Any real group, you could just Google it. R E I A, Google that local real group, real estate investing group, and you should have a list come up in your state. You got a big one down there, don't you? Eddie? Yeah, we got a lot of. Them. We 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 have about four of them. About one, two. We got a South, North, Atlanta, Georgia. Four, yeah, about four or five different reels. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, would you recommend Meetup too? Meetup has some nice smaller ones I like. Yeah, Meetup too. I got a good friend got a Meetup one um, on the South Side. He does once a month. That's it, Eddie. We got a short one today. Oh, That's rare. This is an important one, guys. I know it may seem short and fast, but I promise you, you got to get these memorandums in place. If you don't, it's going to cost you. It costs me several thousand dollars, man. Me too. If it cost me, I would probably say 50000 I lost over the year. And all I had to do was have one, one sheet of paper and sign and notarize. There's something in it. You know, that at the, at the time when you start out, you just don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And you're well, so you're anxious. You can't wait to wait to close, man. You anxious? Yeah. Okay, one last one, Celeste, and we're gone. I've heard Eddie. I've heard several methods of calculating ARV. What would you guys use, and what do you recommend for your AR? I'm sorry, not ARV. Yeah, ARV. Well, you you might be talking about Mayo, Celeste, because ARV is that's a repair value. Yeah, that's just the value. You must, Celeste. You must be talking about Mayo. Eddie, tell us how you get your mayo. <clears throat> um, um, mayo, in this market, you want to use 70% since this is a, um, what is a seller's market now? You want to use about 70%. So I do ARV at the repair value times 0.70. 70% then equals whatever you get minus your repairs. The number you come up with, that's your maximum allowed offer. That's the most you'll be able to sell it for. So if you wholesaling it, that's the most you're going to be able to pay for, for it, for the property. So that means you need to get, you need to be way below your mayo so you can make your spread. You can't be at mayo and then try to wholesale it because you maxed out. And people who do rehabs, they know their numbers, so they're not going to pay you more than mayo. They know the mayo formula. So you got to be under mayo to wholesale it. If you're going to purchase it for a rehab for yourself, then it's fine to buy a mayo. But you do not want to go over mayo because one false mistake could cost you your butt. Because you really don't know about these properties. When you start rehabbing them, anything possible, man. You take over floor hell, the whole floor up under there could be right. You could have Rob floor floor jo joists man anything so you yeah, want to yeah. don't don't go over mail i don't care how bad you want to deal there's plenty of deals out, out here don't go over your mail how many times my coaching clients they i don't know people feel sympathy for sellers eddie i think and they want to kind of give them a little a little bit more money perhaps plus they be anxious too man they want to get a deal close yeah, that's true. If you go over a thousand over Mayo, okay, that's not a big deal. But you go to five, ten thousand, man. Yeah, you're done. Into that house. There's a student actually on here that um that reached out from YouTube. She was in a situation like that. I think they bought at Mayo, but they one of their mentors or something did something bad or something where they was upside down, like a hundred and ten grand. So oh. now they maxed out. They really maxed out, so they can't sell it. They can't even afford to sell it right now. 
Mm-hmm. So I just suggested to them since they got a hard money lender, just put it up for owner finance, a lease purchase, get that down payment, refinance, and use that money to refinance out the property with a hard money lender. Wow. wow. That's a tough one. Did the mentor get any money out of that? Well, they said the mentor ran out with like a hundred and something thousand. That's nasty. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, that was Rosanna. Good God almighty. She just saying that. Oh, Rosanna. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Marcus, Marcus, I will get you those documents. I promise. As soon as I get this joint over, I'm gonna email them over to you, brother. It's a small link, you know. I actually just invest in yourself. Okay, Eddie. Memorandum, get them signed. Every deal, guys. My, my I had a coaching client call me the other day. He asked me about something. I'm like, listen, man. This is what the wealthy do. Are you gonna do it like them? Or are you going to do it like you want to do it? You know, it's like we have studied these people over time. We have been trained. This is how you do it. Don't deviate the system. Are you doing like, I ask myself this when I'm going in, Eddie. Are the wealthy people doing it like this or not? Right. You know, it's like if you're not getting your memorandum signed, you're just asking for trouble. That's how I want to leave you. Anything you want to leave else, Eddie, I'm gone. No, that's it, guys. Just make sure you get that affidavit signed. Yep. Okay, Eddie, I'll talk to you soon, bro. All right, guys. The link for the docs will be in the, uh, in the description below or in the comments. Peace.